What's up? Welcome in Hogue and Johns as we catch John taking a sip of water as the show starts on YouTube. What's going have, on? We have buddy? to get the, uh, the vocal cords ready to talk. Yeah. I have a lot to say. You do? Not really. <laughs> I don't. Well, we missed you yesterday, my friend. I was at my uh, son's kindergarten graduation, yeah. and, and I like this new addition to the kindergarten world. Post-kindergarten graduation parties. That seems excessive. No. What no, are we doing here? I, I, it was a beautiful day. A little pool party. Had a few Don't beers. Don't you have enough birthday parties to go to? Now we got graduation parties. No, I was all for it. The other okay. kids were at school. All right. A couple Coronas. Didn't have to be tacos. in Dallas Hall. Didn't have to watch Justin Fields, I guess, have a bad day at practice, according to everybody. Yeah, he was. He, he just struggled with the deep ball. I thought everything else was fine. I think it's a little overblown. Uh, was it pretty yeah, windy yesterday? It was, and that, I think that contributed to the drill everyone's talking about, including we talked about it yesterday, too. I talked about it with Ginoco. Um He was purposely having him throw into the wind to deal with it, to simulate Soldier Field. And you cut so, through it. Um, yeah, I wasted a joke that I, I wanted to save um, for this show, and I wasted it yesterday. But did you hear what Jalen Johnson said about um, – you know, his his quote that the Bears can find another cornerback, but her, his daughter can't find another dad. Okay. It's a great quote. So I what was, was. What was your joke? <laughs> well, the joke w was really said to Kevin Fishbane because, you know, he was pointing out that you weren't there. And I said, yeah, the athletic can find another columnist, but Johnson's 17 kids can't find another dad. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that was it. Adam Johns was at a graduation party, post kindergarten graduation party, having a few beers while you guys are at Alice Hall. I mean, my kid went to kindergarten twice. We did not have any graduation parties. <laughs> exactly. Or, or even we didn't even have a, a graduation. You guys in the North Burbs are missing out on this new trend. I mean, you know, well, you you people in Edison Park <laughs> will find any excuse to have an adult party at the expense of hey, no, the kids, kids are there. <laughs> well, the, yeah, they're there. Pool party. Okay, pool party. Beautiful day. Beautiful. It's kind of cold for a pool party. Oh, no, that sun was nice. At Hell's Hall, it was one of those days where, like in Lake Forest, it's like kind of cold, even though it's fine everywhere else. Like there was that breeze coming off the lake. It was actually a little chilly out there. Oh, were you in the backfields too? No, we weren't. Uh, first time we were right there on one and two. Okay. So, because usually in that in those backfields, you'll get that. Uh, cold breeze coming in that kind of changes yeah. if you're not out there hustling around practicing actually getting sweaty could change your attire a bit well if, if you're playing football on the field it was a perfect practice day because you like the slightly cooler temperatures it was still beautiful out you had a little breeze to cool you down too so it, it was a it was a great day at house hall and and um you know justin did struggle with the deep ball but that's just not an area of his game that i'm too worried about i think that's actually one of his strengths um, so is it accurate to say that yesterday's practice of the three that we've been able to watch still a small sample size was his worst? I think that that's accurate, but, um, I, I didn't see anything else that was too concerning. In fact, every time he's still throwing a number two, it looks really, really good. Yeah. That's what Kevin said. I asked him what was going on. He goes, DJ Moore is very good. Yeah. Well, and I did uh, probably similar to Kevin. I haven't had a chance to read Fish's uh, stuff this morning on the, on the Athletic, but you should check it out, theathletic.com slash Hogan Johns. I certainly will when we're done recording this. Um, but I did three takeaways in my newsletter this morning, and, and my big conclusion on Justin Fields just through this portion of the offseason, when he's throwing to DJ Moore, he looks like he's throwing timing routes on time. Quicker, more confidence, making that decision, getting the ball out. Those those routes and those throws are on time. That is a very good development. Now, when he's throwing everybody else, I think it's a little bit of a different story. I think it's a little bit more of a mixed bag. I think it's also important to point out that Darnell Mooney still has not been practicing. Chase Claypool has been out now for, it seems like, almost two weeks. We don't know exactly, but he missed both of the last two OTAs that we've been able to watch. Uh, over the course of the last week or so. So he's throwing in new guys. He's but when he's going to number two, John Z, it does look it does look really good. It, and more most importantly, it looks faster to me. Then I would say that 
amounts to a successful OTAs, does it not? I agree. Just in I terms agree. of this this phase, phase three, phase four, whatever it is, veteran mini camp is next week, and then they break for the summer. That would make for a successful off season program if that chemistry has been established, especially with the timing routes. Forget like forcing the ball and you know routes on air and all that stuff. But if the timing is there against some defenders, even if it's, if it's seven on seven, to me that's a successful off season program for your quarterback and your number one wideout. There was a play yesterday, just for example, um, and obviously I can't give away too much on like the, the the routes or anything, but I'll just say this: the it, right when it got to that point where you're kind of in your head, you're going one one thousand two. Okay, you got to throw the ball, throw the ball. Right when it got to that point where you're like, get rid of the ball, Justin. He zips it over the middle to DJ Moore, who came wide open. So, like you could tell, like that was a play. That w- was a timing play. You got to have the protection. You got to have the route come open. And then, boom, to me, and again, I'm not the coach. I don't know. But to me, watching that play with my naked eye, it felt like, okay, that was that was a good example of him knowing, got to get it out, right, wide receiver coming out right at the right time. And he hit him in stride over the middle. Full team or seven on seven? I believe that was, I think that was full team. Okay. So there's a little bit of pressure. Obviously, there's no contact on number yeah. one, but well, and again, yeah, and we could say literally anything we say from OTAs can be put up with an asterisk right after and saying they're not wearing pads. Absolutely, we know that. You know that at this point, everybody's on the same page with that. Um, I know we wanted to talk some stadium stuff too. So I think we should get into that. Uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter at Adam Hogue, at Adam Johns. Uh, again, there's uh, Fish has a bunch of stuff up on theathletic.com. My newsletter's out. Make sure you're signed up for that. Go to allchgo.com slash diehard. Become a diehard. Sign up for the newsletter. I'm pu- pumping those out a little bit more frequently, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and But there's been a bunch of stuff with the stadium in the last week. And including yesterday, while we were at House Hall, apparently Kevin Warren was meeting with the mayor of Chicago. On the phone, right? On the phone? Over the phone? Uh, my understanding. Okay, I didn't know that part. Um, so let me take you through my experience of it. So I was at baseball practice with my son. This is post-kindergarten graduation party. So we're at yep. baseball practice. You had a busy day yesterday. Yes. And then my youngest son, who graduated from kindergarten, played his instructional game old coach pitch so my phone goes off i see it and i read the statement and i like laugh i'm like what was that <laughs> <laughs> what was that so I, I look it up on twitter find kevin kevin's tweet about it retweet it and then i text him I'm like they said absolutely nothing in that statement yes and his response was literally and i know we're making fun of this um, you know how I feel about statements. I don't feel like every team has to put a statement about up about everything and anything, but just in terms of statements produced in my history of covering professional sports, that was one of the, it was a word salad. It was like a Matt Nagy word salad. <laughs> yeah, let's read it to you. And, and first of all, it, it, especially because the subject line on the email, the statement that came out, uh, when you first read it, it's probably the reaction you had, John's when it popped up on your phone. It's like, whoa, this is like this is this could be something here. Joint statement from Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson and Chicago Bears president and CEO Kevin Warren. All right, that's got my attention. Let's click on it. Hundred percent. In quotes, today we met and discussed our shared values and commitment to the city of Chicago, the importance of deep roots, and the need for equitable community investment throughout the city. We are both committed to the idea that the city and its major civic institutions must grow and evolve together to meet the needs of the future. We look forward to continuing the dialogue around these shared values. Well, (laughs) I guess if you didn't share those values, it would be a problem, right? Like, what what are we even talking about? <laughs> I don't know. 
Are we talking about Chicago public schools, gun violence, social justice? Like, are, are we calling a stadium? The, are I we don't calling know. Calling the Bears a major civic institution here? I mean, they probably are. I get that. Yeah. Uh, shout out to David Hawk because I was I, I was listening this morning when I was in the car, and he brought up a decent point I hadn't even thought of, and I should have because I was one of the reporters who was at Hallis Hall. Um, of course, this came out after I was already home, which is maybe not a coincidence, but um, he said, like, if you really wanted to make a statement about this meeting, you had your media right there in the building. Like, have someone come down and take questions and talk about it. Yeah. Like, if you're really, you know, so. It's probably because there's nothing to talk about. Well, yeah. Well, he, right. It sounds like. But but here's why I still think this matters. Okay, a little bit. The specifics of it are whatever. You know, certainly there is no mention or even hint in any type of stadium talk. Which may or may not have happened. I would hope if you know if I'm the mayor, I would have taken that opportunity and that call to to bring up the stadium. And I'm sure, and I'm sure Brandon Johnson did, like he should, right? And if I'm Kevin Warren, the response was probably, uh, "Well, we're open to, like we said last week, we're open to other opportunities that that make sense," and leave it at that. Um, the reason why this does matter, though, at least a little bit, especially because they put out a statement. Is because of how I see this relationship has been. Well, with the previous administration. True. But also with the Park District. True. And how bad it has gotten. That part of it already existed. I mean, if you watch the 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 really good documentary that NBC Sports Chicago did on all this, I mean, it is mind blowing. Yeah. The ineptitude coming from the city and the park district. Like when the Bears are just like, hey, can we get together in the offseason to talk about the stadium and some improvements we need? And like they don't even get a response for months. Not I good. mean, that is unbelievably ridiculous. Um, And then that's on top of that, which has been building for years now. <laughs> the, Ted Phillips emails are just going to spam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we missed it, Ted. Sorry. Yeah, it went right to the spam folder. Um. Then you have the stupid statement that the mayor put out, Mayor Lightfoot, the former mayor, Lori Lightfoot, you know, just concentrate on beating the Packers, which, while true, by the way, <laughs> it's just not the type of dialogue you have in a political relationship, I guess, is the best way to call it. So I, I do think that this is a at least a sign that, hey, look, new mayor, new president, let's try to fix this. Let's at least take a step here to get together and uh, talk because this was as as much as this might be word salad. Um, it's at least some words that because there really hasn't been any dialogue for the most part for really the last few years, which is why the Bears went as far as they did to buy a giant piece of land yeah. for a lot of money, which is something they've ever, never really done in the history of their their franchise. I, I agree with you. If you're one who wants the Bears to stay in the city of Chicago, this is a positive development, at least that there's some form of communication. Obviously, there needs to be more, and there's a long way to go yes. for something to come to fruition within the city limits. A long way to go. But, yes, in terms of having something happen, because as you previously said, not a lot has happened between the two sides in a while, and it got kind of nasty for a bit with the previous administration, Lloyd Lightfoot's administration. This is better, 100% better under Brandon Johnson. Yeah. Um, so we'll see where it goes. I, I uh, My interpretation from kind of reading all the reports uh, – you know, getting on the phone myself with certain people that are somewhat on the fringe involved in all this in the area uh, and know what's going on to a certain extent. It seems to me, John's like if Arlington Heights wants to get this thing done and get the ball rolling, they could do that right now. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think this whole buying land has been a bluff. I think the Bears were prepared to go down this road. 
their point on the tax assessment, while on the surface, uh, citizens everywhere are probably rolling their eyes at the idea, oh, you can just freeze your your tax, your property taxes and all that. But the, in the in the context of stadiums and in the context of what Churchill Downs was paying in taxes for the tax assessor to essentially double the value was it double or almost triple it, it was in, it was an enormous amount yeah. what, what, I'm, whatever I'm, I'm trying to look for the exact numbers here but i would say it caught the bears just based on the conversation that i've i've had with some people extremely off guard that it went that high for a facility that hasn't been in use for quite some time and is in the process of being teared down yes it doesn't how even exist it, yes how did it go up that much Anybody who's been to Arlington Park when it was operational, it was a beautiful place. It was, it was, it was, I loved going there. And it was a, it was a nice piece of land. And so now you're telling me that vacant and now in the process of being demolished, it's somehow worth double or triple in property taxes. Like we all understand taxes in this area are going up, but that's a political ploy. I don't know how else you look at it. Any other other than that? I'm looking for the keep talking. You're, so, you're on a roll here. I'm looking for the exact numbers. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, it's just so I, I completely understand the Bears reacting the way they did, especially when, uh, according to Mark Gannis on the score last week, earlier this week. How long has this week been? I'm confused now. Uh, I think it's only Thursday, Adam. Yeah, so it must have been earlier this week. He said most stadiums don't even have property taxes. So in that context, you can understand why the Bears are all of a sudden like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we'll take a meeting in Naperville. We better get on the phone with the mayor of Chicago. And I think a lot of what, especially when it comes to the school districts, and seeing some type of population in, in, uh, increase and in how you handle that, that is a very fair thing that Arlington, Arlington Heights needs to work out. Um, and there needs to be some type of solution there. I understand the concerns, especially on that front. But I don't know how else you view this property tax thing as anything other than a political ploy. And I mean, I still think Arlington Heights is the overwhelming favorite, but. I just think they should be careful and not screw around with this too much. Yeah, I can't find the exact numbers right now, but it was significant just in terms of the hike. I, I want to say it was almost triple. And just like anybody who who's buying something, right? Looking at a new house, you check the taxes, right? Of course, you want to pay less. Um, politics, I think yeah, but what you said. I, I gave this analogy earlier in the week, and I realize it's not quite apples to apples. But... Let's say you bought a house, a vacant property that you are planning to demolish and build on that land. Obviously, when the whole thing's said and done, you're expecting the property tax to go up. But this is the equivalent of you knock the house down and all of a sudden you find out that they're at least doubling your property tax value on an empty piece of land now. Yeah, when it's done, you're, you're talking about like a home remodeling project. When it's you're done, putting, yes, sure. When it's done, yes. Your, your taxes you're, do change. Absolutely. But for them to do that in the process of knocking it down and saying, oh, just because you bought it, it's now worth double, that you would, you would at minimum think twice about building on it. Ted Phillips used these words when like Kevin Warren was introduced tax certainty. I asked Kevin Warren about that, the NFL owners meetings about tax certainty. And obviously you don't really give an in-depth answer because he was still exploring everything that was going on with well, purchasing Arlington park, but tax certainty are the buzzwords. The bears have been uh, using for some time because they, they need it with this project. Well, and, and at first I was like, okay, that seems like, I mean, I get it. I get. I, we all want tax certainty. That'd be great, right? So I guess if you have the power to get it, great. But then when you read more and you hear more about what stadium situations are normally like, it's totally understandable why they're asking for that. Before we move on and we take questions from Twitter, 
do you see any scenario now where they stay in Chicago? To to me, it still comes down to land. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I I don't. I see like a less than one percent chance that they stay at Soldier Field. I think that that's like my advice to Brandon Johnson would be to to find the Bears some land in Chicago. If if you're if if you want to be serious about this, like your next conversations with Kevin Warren, where the Bears are at as a franchise, they want land. They want their own stadium. Yeah. They want their own piece of property. They don't want they don't want to be tenants of the Chicago Park District anymore. They want their own stadium. Yeah, and the thing about Chicago, the thing about Chicago though is you might be able to find the land somewhere to do do the stadium. Uh, you can go back to some of those Olympic plans where they were going to build that temporary stadium. Like there, yeah. it, I, I believe there's still that big chunk of land just south of Sears Tower, like right on the river. Like not too far away from Soldier Field, just straight to the west. Um, I don't obviously I'm not an expert in this stuff. I don't know if that's enough land to put a stadium. Um but you're not gonna get the whole real estate development then. Right? Like that's See, I, and I think the Bears would be okay with that if if there's like some type you you don't need the the townhomes. You don't need the condos. You might want an entertainment district, and that's fine. I mean, Chicago already has townhomes, condos. It, it needs more affordable housing, I can tell you that. Yeah. But in terms of the Bears' interests, you're probably, you'd probably accept land with maybe some capacity to add an entertainment district. Well, and I have no idea what their, uh, you know, business plans are if they if they were to go down that route would they just flip the arlington land or would they still develop it even without a stadium don't know they spent a lot of money on that presentation and all that that stuff's not cheap yeah to get those architects involved and and draw up the whole thing the amount of meetings the amount of planning that that, that went into all of that the the studies i mean they're so far down the road with Arlington Heights right now that including having closed on the land, which is no small thing that it's just still hard to envision them peeling back from that. They're not going to Naperville. I can guarantee that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's going to Naperville. It feels like the old bluff of the, the bears going to Gary in the end. I remember that one. Well, that's the funniest thing that's ever happened actually in the world. Gary. Gary, that's where you're going. Naperville. Naperville's kind of nice. I've been in Naperville a few times. It's far. No, we're not going to Naperville. Well, I'll go, I'll go back to covering the Hawks then. I, yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm kidding. I love drive, down, drive down the Kennedy one time. You will change your mind. Oh, I know. I'm done. Yeah, I, I have. You can, you can get to Naperville. <laughs> Trust me. You can get to Naperville faster. Even from your house. <laughs> Get downtown right now. It is awful. Hey, by now you probably know our next partner, and it's a really cool product. Let's talk about Athletic Greens. If you're looking to get better gut health, more energy, or a stronger immune system in a really easy, natural way, you've got to check out Athletic Greens. I'm sure you'll agree that most of us are not huge fans of having to take a bunch of pills or vitamins in the morning. But with Athletic Greens, you can get rid of all of those extra vitamin bottles and finally make some room in your cabinet. Athletic Greens is an all-in-one solution, and you'll really enjoy getting your daily vitamins. So what is this stuff? With one scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. 
all of those things. Right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially as we head into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Adams. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash Adams, plural, to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Um, all right, we got some questions. Yep, hold on, hold on. All right. Where are they at? Where are they at? Sorry, I'm still in leave mode here. Your your leave from leave? My leave from leave. All right, this is from David. We'll be a little bit different with these questions. From David on Twitter. Which road game this season are you looking forward to the most? Hmm. Oh, this is a simple answer for me. New Orleans? Yes. Um, double checking the schedule here just to make sure. I mean, New Orleans is a good one, obviously. My boring answer is always Lambo and Minnesota. I just love those stadiums so much. But that's not really the way. You know what? And I made this point when there was all the rumors about uh, Germany. I disagree with you. Because we get to go to New Orleans quite a bit. Kansas yeah, City. We... Oh, no, okay. Kansas oh, yeah. City. Okay, okay, I'll give you Kansas City. Because because Kansas City, um, first of all, is a, it's a good town. Amazing food, especially the barbecue. And the stadium's awesome. Arrowhead is a cool place. Plus the matchup, Patrick Mahomes versus Justin Fields. I, I To me, the especially because this is a late September, should still be warm, relatively beautiful, because it can get pretty hot in Kansas City, too. I've experienced that humidity in the summer. But late September, I think the answer is Kansas City. Okay, I might change my answer for that. Let's think of the food in New Orleans, though. I mean, New Orleans is great, obviously. And let's see, that's early November. That should be nice down there that time of year, too. Another trip to SoFi, too. This time against the Chargers. That'll be a Bears home game. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I mean, against the Rams, it was like still a Bears home game. Yes. Against oh, the Chargers? It's going to be like oh my. 70% Bears fans. Yeah. I already know a few people going to New Orleans and... Um, LA. It's a great road schedule this year. I mean, Tampa too. You get Tampa. Uh, if you want an easier trip where you don't spend a lot of money on tickets, I mean, going to Washington, D.C., no one goes to those games. <laughs> I shouldn't say nobody, but you can get in there and it's a nice, easy trip. There's so many good the options. Stadium's this stadium's so far away, though. I would not go to Cleveland in December, though. All right. Another question from David. Are there any standouts and OTAs just from a physical looks perspective? Guys where you were surprised by their physique or speed. I'm on the record saying that Javon Dexter and Zach Pickens have impressed me. Yeah. Big athletes. Strong. Just just impressive just in terms of physique, size, speed, everything you want in terms of a big athlete up front. Yeah. For me, in terms of size, Tremaine Edmonds. I've been yeah, a huge yeah, Tremaine Evans yeah. fan for a long time, but I've never actually seen him like up close and personal on a practice field like that. And and I wrote this in my newsletter this morning. He is a defensive lineman with running back speed playing Mike linebacker. I mean, he's a unicorn. You you, just, you don't have that. It's it's uh, every every single practice it stands out. And I think fans that show up uh, to training camp and get to watch some of these practices are going to have the same exact reaction. And then on the flip side, you know, Tyler Scott surprised me at how small he was. But what I will say is he has stood out to me on the field at the same time. And he's been, he's been mixed in there a little bit. One of the deep balls that Justin Fields overthrew yesterday was to Tyler Scott, who had a step on Tyreek Stevenson. Could have been a completion. So... See, can I say something about like that incompletion doesn't bother me in a way 
Like, I know you want your quarterback to hit it, but he's throwing to a player who's been on the team for two weeks, three weeks. Or they've practiced together for three weeks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's got to be some chemistry worked out here. Not everything is instantaneous in this world, everybody. The one that bothered me, that one did not bother me as much as the one that he that he um, threw to Valus Jones in the end zone because the ball landed out of the back of the end zone. Can't catch a ball that's out of bounds. It's true. So that one is just like, you got to you gotta keep that ball in bounds. You got to give him a chance. All right, two more questions. This is from Ryan Finley. Is this Pat Finley's brother? Maybe. Wow. For someone who has paid zero attention to OTAs by design, what are the absolute key highlights so far? I think it's easy. He wears number two, and he happens to be good at catching the ball. Yeah. Well, and this is kind of mixes with the last question because in terms of like watching watching DJ Moore – all, all disclaimers, right? It's they're in shorts, blah, 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 no pads. We get it. Okay, all that said. To me, in that setting, the really good players should really stand out. And it's kind of like when you're watching college football and you're trying to figure out who the top prospects are for the NFL. Like, those dudes should really stand out. Be like, wow, that guy's just different he's better than everyone else that's the experience i've had watching dj Moore in otas he is just quick he knows how to get open talking to tyke tolbert the bears wide receivers coach yesterday just hearing him talk about how like let's not forget he's learning a new offense here and he shows up to Hal's hall after a relatively surprising trade and like hasn't screwed up and like, and another key thing is, if there has been a mistake, he has not made the same mistake twice. It's like, okay, got get that corrected. So, for all this to be the case while he's learning a new offense that he hasn't been in, it's uh, it's been pretty impressive, even if it is shorts. And I want to repeat this from a previous podcast. I like that the Bears aren't messing around; they just put Darnell right at right tackle. Yeah. Speaking of like physiques and size and athleticism. Everything the Bears said about him is true. Cole Big dude. Com- yeah, Cole Komet joked yesterday that uh, Darnell Wright fell down in practice the other day, and he just, like, very athletically rolled into a somersault and popped right back up. And Cole was like, this is, like, the most gracious somersault I've ever seen a 330-pound man. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a 330-pound man. I thought there was going to be a joke about like uh, that registering on the Richter scale or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) No, he was so gracious about it. It didn't. All right. Final question. And I like this one specifically for you. This is from Connor. Are the Vikings in official rebuild mode with the release they made and with Hunter being on the trade block? Uh, the Vikings are in an interesting spot. I I don't. They're they're definitely not where the Bears were, where they had to tear it all down. I mean, they have pieces there. Um, I don't have the cap numbers in front of me, but I don't. I, they're not in cap hell. I don't believe. But they are in a position where I think it's very. It's going to be very very hard for them to duplicate their season last year. And I think the like the stats, the the analytics said that was happening anyway because of all the oh. close one score games they were in. Right, same roster, same situation. There's just analytics say there's no way they win the same amount of games. There's just the turnover luck. The you win, and the same said for the Bears. The opposite way, they the amount of games the Bears lost in one score games. There's usually a correction, and the Bears have upgraded their roster. I feel like the Vikings have tried this before where they tried to reload while remaining competitive. Like it happened under Mike Zimmer where like every other year they were good. They yeah. Playoffs and they don't make the playoffs and they would try to consistently reload and they were pretty good at it. Like Mike Zimmer had a lot of success there. Now they have some stability at quarterback with my guy, Kirk Cousins, but oh, all that plays out in the end. I think they're going to try to do it again where they try to reload. Well, Staying competitive, but what I would say 
is that they were able to do that because the Bears and the Lions haven't been very good. That looks a bit different now. We know the Lions can be competitive. We saw that last year, and everybody's high on them again. And I think we can all agree that the Bears are going to be better this season as well. Um, I actually, I feel like I'm in, in a rare person that actually loves the opening matchup with the Lions playing the Chiefs. Because, and look, there's there, there can be a lot of fool's gold in week one and week two of the NFL season. I'll give you that. Like, let's remember the Bears beat the 49ers in week one last year. But that being said, like, I still, I, I don't know how to read the Lions. Like, my gut tells me that they're not going to live up to all the hype because they are the Lions and the Lions will ultimately lion. <laughs> but there's also part of me that's like, I do think that they have a lot of good pieces that are, that can develop. And like Hutchinson's obviously a stud. So like they have some good players there. So if they can compete early, They're only going to get stronger as the season goes along with um, what's his face who got suspended. Why am I blanking on his name? The wide, the really good wide receiver. Um, oh, he'll be back. Line. Yeah. Jamison Williams, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the division's wide open. With Aaron Rodgers gone, everything is up for grabs, even for the Packers. No team really stands out above the rest, in my opinion. And, I mean, and you know what, though, for the Vikings, if you're giving away like two of your best players or sorry, giving away is not the, the best way to put it, like releasing one of your best players and having one on the trading block, like that's not a good thing, though, just in terms of talent leaving out the door and not adding equal talent within it. Yeah, I this Dalvin Cook thing to me is not that big of a deal. I mean, Dalvin Cook's a really good player. Um but these types of cuts have to be made in June a lot. Like, they happen. It's a running back. But I, I do think it's – I like Alexander Madison, but I don't, I don't think that you're going to get the same type of consistent dynamic production that Dalvin Cook gave you. So it's definitely – I think I, I don't think there's any question the Vikings are set up to have a down year. Now, that could still be seven wins, maybe eight wins. But they're just not going to be able to duplicate what they did last season. I'm with you. All right. That was the last one? That's it. No, there's other ones, but I think we've covered everything. Okay. Um, well, another good OTA. We're done with OTAs, actually. Next week's minicamp. I'm out. You got the fish man coming in? You got yeah, a special I, guest? No, I think we'll probably. I just got to figure out the timing. Well, next week's a busy week for me. We also got Carmel summer camp starting up. Nice for those to mini camping summer camp to line up together. I don't know who scheduled that. Bears. I feel like some teams had their mini camp this week. They did, way. right? You yeah. could do it. I think the Vikings did, didn't they? Um, no, I'm just playing along. So it's gonna be a busy week for me. You're off. We'll find some time to get it. We'll we're probably just gonna be doing one episode, to be honest with you, next week. Um, it's also my tenth wedding anniversary Ooh. on Thursday. So I will be missing one of the one of the mini camp days too. Because uh, my wife and I are going to get out of town. so But we'll, we'll 100% get an episode out to you during mini camp um, and whatever news comes out, whatever observations we have. I think Kevin Fishbane will probably join us. And um, even if we have to record it at 2 in the morning, we will. At least I will. I don't know if Kevin will. Um, we'll get that out to you for sure. So stay tuned for that. Appreciate all the love and support. Make sure you're following us on Twitter. Please rate and review the podcast. Uh, and that goes a long way to helping spread the pod. Same thing on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that like button. Appreciate everybody that watches along that way too. Merch is up. ObviousShirts.com. Check it out. We're working on reloading some of that stuff and uh, restocking. So stay tuned for that because I know there are a bunch of stuff kind of out on sizes. Um, but we're working on that through the summer months. So hopefully that's all squared away by the time training camp starts, which is, you know, kind of scary, not too far away. And then we'll be back to two weeks episode. Yeah. Oh yeah. Someone we'll was see. asking about that. Oh it's yeah. Summer. We're, oh, when, yeah. We're in the, we do this every year in the summer. Uh, training camp comes around. We're back full go. No question about it. And, um, but we do have to enjoy these summer months, summer days while we got them. 
kind of recharge the batteries. So, all right, we're out of here. Uh, you enjoy your time off, Johnsy. I'll be back next week with the fish man. We'll break it down. Mandatory veteran minicamp. Mandatory for everyone except for Adam Johns. You got that right. Talk to you later. See ya.